بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته Ladies and gentlemen, esteemed colleagues, I want to start by thanking uh, National Bank of Bahrain, Finnmark, Tim Keen for uh, inviting me to speak today. Uh, you can tell by the caliber of the attendees how important this topic is to any leader, chief executive of any organization. I think human capital today, especially for any service-oriented industry or company, indeed for any service-dominated economy like ours in Bahrain, is a critical topic. And in my organization today, I think about human capital as much, if not more, than I think about financial capital every single day. So I wanted to address this morning the subject of the event today. How do we accelerate human capital development? And what role does mentorship play in achieving that process? So I'm going to share with you a couple of thoughts. Some of them are going to be controversial, especially for today's topic, and probably will never be invited to a topic like this. But I think controversy is good. Let's be open, let's be honest, let's not do lip service to mentorship. Let's talk about how proper mentorship takes place. So my first message is, my first thought is for mentees, a lot of the young people here. It's no stranger to advice, nobody will be uh, ignorant to the topic that you learn more on the job than you will ever learn in the classroom. They don't teach you in college how to negotiate a real transaction, how to handle a difficult customer, how to manage upwards with a difficult boss. All of these things you learn on the job. And I tell my son, he's in college, he's a freshman, I tell him, work every single opportunity you have. Work at a Starbucks, interact with people, Work every summer, because you will learn more about the nature of people, how you sell, how you deal with customers, than you will ever learn in a classroom setting. And so that is the basis of what mentorship is about. You have to come to work knowing that this is going to be a better education for you than you ever learned in a classroom. My second thought is, again, to mentees. Be curious, inquisitive, and hungry to learn. You're not an observer in this process. You're a participant. You're the architect of your career. Take responsibility for that very, very seriously. Till this day, every year, December 31st, I look back on my career and I say, have I learned more? Have I become a better person? a better executive, a better leader than I was on January 1st, every single year. And if my trajectory of learning is flattening, flat, or if it's decreased, I think about my career again. I change jobs. Because life's too short, you need to make sure that you are learning through that process. And so you've got to take control of your destiny. And nothing can substitute, no structured program can substitute for self-drive, an initiative. My third thought, and this is where it's a little controversial, is I don't think organized mentorship is sufficient. I used to work at JP Morgan. They had a mentorship program. And part of that mentorship program is you had to have lunch once a month with your mentor. And I had this regular lunch, and maybe it's the crime of my mentor, but he looked bored. He would ask me about what I wanted, you know, what was happening in my life. We would have that hour and a half lunch. He'd tick a box and he'd go back to his his day-to-day -day job. And I was inquisitive. I'd ask him, but I'm not saying that mentorship programs, structured mentorship programs should be abandoned. That's not my message. My message is this is not the lever alone that accelerates human capital development. And this brings you to my fourth point. For mentorship to work, it's a two-way street. The mentor needs to get something out of it, 
and the mentee needs to get something out of it. That individual having lunch with me was probably ticking a box so he could tell his boss, yes, I had my lunch with my mentee, but for it to be really effective, you had to contribute something that makes that mentor succeed. And this is my fourth topic. So what does work in mentorship? Well, my experience, it's true collaboration in teams between senior and junior executives where the real t learning takes place. And here you have to have that junior executive placed at the coalface, learning under pressure in real time and really finding out what it takes to complete a project or assignment successfully. And I'll tell you a story about something that relates to that in my own career. In 2008, I used to work at InvestCorp. 2008, we were in the midst of the largest financial crisis, at least in my lifetime, um, and maybe the biggest since the financial depression. It was November 2008. Lehman Brothers had just collapsed. Collapsed. Financial world was in complete havoc. I was a junior managing director. I had just been promoted. And the CEO of InvestCorp, this very imposing 60-year-old Iraqi man, his name was Namir Kardar, had just discovered that we needed to raise $600 million of capital to basically protect this institution from you know, potential collapse. And so I was a managing director running an institutional team, plucked me from in this institution, called me to his office and said, we're gonna raise this capital together, not because there was anything special, but he realized he had to do it with an institutional client base. And over that nine months, I worked with the CEO to help achieve that and there was no substitute to having a close interaction with him. Understanding where we got declined, where we got yeses, working through every single transaction, and it was an invaluable experience that I'll never forget in my life of having that experience of working with, with this gentleman. Now, it was a two-way street. He wasn't plucking me because he was mentoring me out of community service. He was plucking me because he wanted me to do a job. So it was my obligation to sit and achieve something that would satisfy the firm's objectives. And it was intimidating because as a young man, you're, you're worried you make a mistake with the CEO. If you fail, guess what? Your career is dead. But that's how you learn. You learn by getting out of your comfort zone. So again, mutually beneficial relationship, two-way street. So my final thought, and this is the message to executives and leaders, is those organizations which are truly flat, which create small collaborative teams where responsibility is shared and pushed down, whereas senior executives, you reach down in the organization and pluck people and work with them for mutual relationship, where you set the tone so that your executives do exactly the same, where institutions don't fear promoting youth, where capability, not age, matters, those are the institutions that are gonna, that are gonna nurture talent and are gonna retain talent. It's easier said than done, of course, but organizations that are able to achieve that will attract and retain the best. Thank you very much.